this video will discuss about uh, one of the thermoelectric effect that is uh, Seebeck effect. Seebeck effect is the basis for one of the commonly used temperature uh, sensing device that is thermocouple. So thermocouple is widely used in many industries uh, like metal industries, chemical industries, steam production, food because of its advantage of um, high temperature range, a low cost and uh, goodness. So before going into further discussion of the Seebeck effect, we will discuss what are the uh, various thermoelectric effect. So in 1821, Thomas Seebeck, that is, uh, this is the basis for the Seebeck effect, has discovered that an EMF or potential difference will be produced by a circuit that is made up of two dissimilar wires when one of the junction is heated and another is at a cold uh, junction. So later in 1834, uh, Jean Peltier discovered a reverse process of that Seebeck effect that the passage of electric current through a thermocouple that is which made of two junctions will produce, um, produces heating or cooling depending upon the direction of uh, the uh, electric current and this is known as Peltier effect. And later in 1854, William Thompson, that is Lord Kelvin, discovered that if a temperature difference exists between any two points of a current carrying conductor, heat is either liberated or absorbed depending upon the direction of this current and the material. So this is which is in addition to the thermal, uh, sorry, Peltier effect and this is known as the Thomson effect. So the uh, Seebeck and Peltier effect uh, is uh, for uh, two dissimilar metals whereas this uh, Thomson effect is in a single homogeneous metal. So we will see the Seebeck effect. So before going to um, have the definition we will consider a, a aluminum rod that is heated at one end and cooled at other end. So the electrons in the hot region are more energetic because they are having higher energy due to the heat and therefore they have greater uh, velocities than those in the cold region. So consequently there is a net diffusion of these electrons from the cold um, sorry hot end towards the cold end which leaves behind the positive metal ions in the hot region and accumulates electrons in the cold region. So you can see in the figure below so the um, electrons will move from a hot end to the cold end. So this situation prevails because this movement of this uh, electron from hot end to cold end will create an uh, uh, electric field as uh, shown in this uh, right side figure. So um, these electrons will not uh, continuously move to the cold end because there is an electric field that is generated. So this will prevent uh, the movement or diffusion of these electrons further uh, into the uh, cold region. So a voltage is therefore developed between the hot and cold end with the uh, hot end uh, is positive um, potential and cold end is the uh, negative potential for this um, aluminum metal. So the potential delta V across a piece of metal due to the temperature difference delta T is called Seebeck effect. And this gauge so means the measuring factor is that defines the magnitude of this effect is the Seebeck coefficient which is also known as thermoelectric power which is given by s equal to dv by dt so which is given by minus v hot minus v cold that is uh, potentials at hot and cold end by t hot minus t cold means temperatures at cold hot and cold ends which is the uh, unit is volts per kelvin so s is a measure of the amount of potential that is induced per difference in temperature so s is one, one of the important transport properties of a given material so the sign of S represents here we have seen is having a sign so which represents the polar potential of the cold side with respect to the hot side. Here if you see in aluminium so aluminium is having a, a cold side in, uh, a negative polarity compared to hot side so the sign of S for aluminium is negative. So if electrons diffuse from hot end to cold end, so then the cold side is negative with respect to the hot side and then S is negative, so which we already discussed. For aluminum, uh, we have already discussed the example which is having a negative CB coefficient. In a P-type semiconductor, the holes will diffuse from hot, cold, sorry, hot to cold end. So the, so the cold end is positive with respect to the hot side, then the sign of S is positive. So this is also um, uh, common for uh, some of the metals like copper so where the electrons will diffuse from cold end uh, to the hot end uh, which is having a, which is having the Seebeck um, coefficient uh, of positive value. 
if you see in other words the ac is positive when the direction of the electric current is same as the direction of the thermal current so thermal current will flow from uh, hot end to the cold end and ac is negative when the direction of the electric current is opposite to that of the thermal current here if you see the thermal current is from hot end to cold end whereas the current um, either this conventional current i is flowing against uh, this thermal current so the ac is negative uh, in this case so Seebeck effect is used for um, the temperature measuring using the thermocouple. So this is the thermocouple is one of the commonly used device. So when two dissimilar conductors A and B compress a circuit, a current will flow in that um, circuit as long as the two junctions are at different temperatures. So this is the Seebeck effect. So this is we are using for the measure um, as a basic principle for temperature measuring device. So here uh, the EMF that is induced is directly proportional to the temperature difference. So by measuring the temperature, the um, sorry, so by measuring the EMF, the temperature uh, can be uh, indirectly estimated. So Seebeck effect is the conversion of the thermal energy to the electrical energy. So here, if you see, if the two um, materials of uh, that are used to form the two junctions, if they are same, so no EMF will be produced because the CP coefficient for the both the materials are uh, same. So the net EMF that is induced in both the metals will be equal. Actually, we are measuring the difference in the EMF between these two, so it will be zero for the same materials. So if so, so in this case, in the second case, when one of uh, the copper wire is replaced with uh, metal alloy like chromel, which is having a different uh, CB coefficient, so that different transport property, which will um, having different EMF uh, in these uh, two uh, junctions, so which will create an EMF uh, that is proportional to the temperature difference of these two junctions. So the voltage across each metal um, element depends upon its uh, CB coefficient which we already discussed so that the potential difference between the two wires will depend on SA minus SB because we are measuring the EMF between the two wires. So the EMF between two wires which is given by VAB equal to delta VA minus delta VB. This is the potential um, uh, of uh, VA is the potential that is induced in one wire and VB is the potential induced in the another wire. So and we are measuring the potential difference across these two wires. So VAB is equal to finally um, integral of T naught to T which is the temperature difference SCA minus SP into delta uh, T which is equal to T naught in uh, integral T naught to T SAB into delta T. So if you see for a type um, K thermocouple which is made up of chromal and aluminal, so chromal is at positive end and aluminal is of negative end. So the SAB the CB coefficient is 40 microvolts per Kelvin at uh, 27 degrees centigrade. So here uh, the um, yes, CB coefficient of chromal is 22 microvolts per Kelvin and uh, CB coefficient of aluminal is minus 18 microvolts per Kelvin and if you see the CB coefficient of constant n is minus 39 microvolts per Kelvin. So the type E thermocouple which is made up of chromal and constant n which is having a um, CB coefficient of 61 microvolts per Kelvin because 22 minus of minus 39 which is equal to 61 microvolts. So conduction electrons with higher energies having greater mean speeds so on the longer mean free path so that they diffuse from hot to cold region so which we have already discussed this will apply only to some metals like aluminum, potassium, sodium etc. So in those metals that is lambda mean free path increases with energy so electrons will migrate from cold, hot to cold end and this will be the negative and in those metals where this mean free path the lambda decreases with energy electrons will migrate from cold to hot end and this will be positive for that metals like copper. So the best choice for the thermocouple would be the combination of the highest plus and the highest minus CB coefficient. So CB coefficient is much larger in semiconductors than in metals but um, why you are not using semiconductors because semiconductors and some metals cannot be fabricated in the form of thin wires and robust wires which we are using for measurement of the temperature. So this is the main reason why commercial thermocouples are always metallic. Whereas for Peltier effect, we don't we don't need wires, hence semiconductor materials are the preferred choice, so which we will discuss in the next video. 
so this is the uh, chart which is showing uh, the cb coefficient for uh, semiconductors which is uh, we which, where uh, the cb coefficient value is very high and uh, some of our, some of the metals this is the cb coefficient and different types of uh, the thermocouples uh, the cb coefficient is uh, listed so here uh, this is uh, the two words so yeah, thermo element a and thermo element b so thermo element a is generating some emf uh, depending upon the cb coefficient of thermo element a and thermo element b is generating one emf so um, which is um, depending upon the, the cb coefficient of thermo element b and uh, thermocouple output we are measuring uh, the between emf between these two thermo elements so uh, for um, best thermocouples so the um, uh, one thermo uh, thermo element a should have a um, highest positive cb coefficient and uh, thermo element b should have a minus um, cb coefficient thank you for watching my video